AI had huge innovations this week when it comes to getting maximum quality from the tools. This is your AI Film News of the Week. We want to kick things off by saying thank you to everyone who submitted your project for our AI Horror Competition. We have seen so many incredible submissions and our judges are about to take a look at all of your incredible projects. We'd also like to wish everyone who is competing in the Runway 48 Hour Film Festival the best of luck. We can't wait to see all of the incredible submissions that you guys create. And on that note, I want to do a quick comparison between Runway and Pika Labs. So we're going to take a look at two different videos and I want you to tell me which one you think was Runway and which one you think was Pika. So let's take a look at number one and number two. So let me know in the comments which one you think was Runway and which one you think was Pika. The first one to let us know in the comments will win some swag from Curious Refuge. The team from Leonardo also released a brand new AI upresing tool called Alchemy Refiner. Now this one's really unique because it's not like Topaz that takes a core visual and simply scales it up and enhances it. This actually reinterprets the actual frame to generate even more quality. Let me show you how to use it. So I'm inside of Leonardo and I have this image of a woman in a sci-fi film. Now, if you kind of look at some of the background characters here, you can see that their faces kind of have that very typical AI distortion on them and her eyes has just a little bit of distortion. So it's not the best quality possible. Well, the interesting thing about using this new technology is it will actually reinterpret the frame and take a look at some of the finer details and enhance them. So essentially it's throwing a more advanced and more intensive algorithm at this specific image while preserving the composition. So all you have to do is go to the Alchemy Refiner button and you can change the strength. If you want more changes, you can do medium, less changes low, and of course more with high. And there's also a smooth mode that can help with hands and faces, but it says that it also could impact finer details. So it's a back and forth process. I'm going to stick with medium for this specific image, but again, it's a back and forth process. You can see what works best for you. Okay, let's take a look at our result here. So as you can see, the bokeh qualities in the background were still preserved. So it didn't do any weird sharpening or anything in the background. The background characters, their faces now have natural contours and shadow. And then if we go over here to our foreground subject, you can see her face is much, much more clear. The individual hair strands are more refined and uh, the overall mech suit is looking much more crisp. And the cool thing is in Leonardo, you can go back and forth between the original image and then we can go to the refined image and see that it is much, much more sharp. So I was actually talking with one of the image to video teams this last week about integrating this technology inside of video platforms. It would be amazing if we had one pass that was kind of the preliminary pass that where you're workshopping the individual images and video elements that you want to see. And you could click refine, which would essentially rerun that video footage with improved quality. So I think this is going to be a very powerful tool for AI technology moving forward. And it's been awesome to see that the folks at Leonardo were the first ones to come out with this type of technology. There's also some pretty cool examples over on X of the befores and afters where you can see how this technology really does go in and refine and add to the overall realism inside of a scene. Midjourney also came out with the ability to times two and times four upres your image inside their program directly. So all you have to do is upres an image. I have this one of this woman living in a forest where the leaves are made out of crystals. And whenever you upres, you now see a times two and a times four upres. Let's go ahead and hit times four. When your image is upscaled, you essentially can click in here and go to open in browser and save it directly from the web. You should always be doing that because you get maximum quality in Midjourney whenever you go through that process. And of course you can redo your upscaler. Midjourney basically said that the times four upscaler takes three times longer than the times two upscaler. So it uh, obviously just takes more GPU power and can eat into some of your minutes more if you are using Midjourney directly. 
So we have this older image that was generated before this update inside of Midjourney. While you actually can still up-res those using the new algorithm, all you have to do is get the seeds. So you just go to the emoji, hit the envelope icon, which will bring over a message in the Midjourney bot. Just grab job ID. And now we can go back to our server and go to forward slash, type in show, and then paste your job ID. And it will pull up that job. And now it'll allow you to up res. And in this case, because we had the four panel, it wasn't a big deal because we could have up res one of those uh, four panels. And now we can upscale times two or times four. I do want to note that this does take quite a while directly inside of Midjourney. So it's not an ideal experience at this point. I'm sure the algorithm will get faster in the future. So you probably want to know how this compares to some of the other tools like Topaz Photo or Gigapixel that is uniquely designed for up images. So I actually did a comparison. So this is our original image from Midjourney. If we uh, zoom in here, you can see that, you know, the quality is, you know, limited because the image that you get directly from Midjourney is much smaller. Now, whenever we up from Midjourney using their algorithm, it gave us this quality. You can see that, you know, individual hair strands are there, seems really crisp and it has the, the qualities that you would expect um, with the, the lens. It didn't read interpret this scene. So I would say note that this is different from Leonardo's innovation, which was actually reinterpreting the scene with a better algorithm. I think Leonardo's technology is a little bit more impressive uh, than Midjourney specifically, which essentially is just using an image up technology uh, that, you know, that type of technology has already existed for a while. Now let's compare that to Gigapixel where we can zoom in here on the person and we can see that this image uh, is really good. Now there is a little bit of artifacting with this Gigapixel image. You can see that some of these hair follicles are kind of duplicating a little bit. Uh, but when we go over here to the crystals, you can see that they are a little more sharp. Now I should note that when we up inside of Midjourney, it took about 10 times longer than up with Gigapixel. So I'd say if you're batch up and you don't want to eat into all of the GPU time, using a third party tool like Gigapixel or Topaz Photo is a much better option at this point. In terms of realism, there's really not much of a difference. So you can use whatever tool you want to use, especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money on a third party application, it can be helpful to go ahead and use Midjourney to up your images. Topaz Video AI number four also dropped this last week and it features quite a few improvements that you need to know about. Now, number one is the Nix model update, which basically removes compression artifacts and generally improves the quality of your underlying video. There's a new Iris model that improves smoothing faces, and there's a 50% GPU improvement when you're using a Tensor approved GPU. Now, this is Topaz Video AI 4, and generally it looks very similar to the previous iterations of Topaz. But when you start clicking around into some of the features, you can see uh, some of the new models, some of the new features, and just kind of design improvements that they've made inside of the technology. There's a feature breakdown over on their website that features all of the new things that you need to know about. Now, you probably want to know, is the quality actually better? So let me show you the quality improvement that we can see with Topaz Video 4. So this first clip is directly from Runway. This has not been enhanced with Topaz Video. So you can see this video is very choppy and has a lot of the distortion that is native to using AI video at this point. And then I took the video into Topaz Video AI 4 and enhanced it using the Proteus model. So we'll go ahead and play that back. And this right off the bat looks really, really good. Now I should note that there is still some compression. So what I did after that is I ran it through the model one more time using the brand new Nix model V2. So the Nix model is right here, Nix HQ Denoise, and I didn't add any noise and I didn't recover any details. So everything was turned off essentially and just ran it through the model one last time. And it gave us this footage that has a lot more sharpness in the iris, uh, some of the compression artifacting that was in the edges of the video frame, 
uh, were removed. So the model is really, really good for taking footage from Pika, from runway, up it in a realistic way. Now, I also did the same thing with some footage of an actual person's face. And this is some raw footage that we had from Pika Labs. You can see that, you know, the subject's face is a little blurry, but the, you know, generally the video quality is actually pretty darn good considering this came directly from a generative AI tool. And then we used the iris model inside Topaz video, and this is the quality of the result. So you can see that the face has a lot more smoothness to it. There's a lot more detail in the eyes. Now in this specific video, her lips, there is a little bit of warping, but that warping was in the underlying video that was generated inside of Pika Labs. So hypothetically, we would run that take a couple more times, get the exact result that we're looking for, and then throw it through the iris model inside Topaz video. So it really seems like Topaz video is really staking their claim as the industry's premier video upscaling tool and I love the work that they've been up to. I should also note that the November session of our AI filmmaking course is right around the corner and opens up on October 25th. If you're interested in wanting to learn the latest AI filmmaking workflows and want to be a part of a network of incredibly talented artists, we'd love to have you in the program. We're also expanding access to the program with video updates for a year. So you will have access to the latest tips and tricks as we update the lessons throughout the year. I'd also like to thank the Topanga Film Festival for showcasing our work at their AI Film Festival this weekend. And on that note, I should say that Shelby will be speaking at the AI and the Creator Economy event at the FYI space out here in Los Angeles on October 24th. If you have a chance to make it out to that event, there's still tickets available right now. We both would love to meet you in person. We're in the middle of the SAG strike right now, and they've worked together with some senators to put together a really just preliminary draft of the type of bill that could potentially be introduced to Congress related to likeness. Now, you can get into the nitty gritty and read this proposed draft at this point, but here's a quick breakdown of the things you need to know. Number one, studios essentially will have to get permission to use someone's likeness inside of a film. So you're not gonna have a Margot Robbie film without Margot Robbie basically giving permission uh, for that film, which makes sense. Studios also will have to get permission to copy someone's voice. So you can't use James Earl Jones's awesome voice inside of a piece without, of course, getting permission, you know, paying for the use of that voice, which totally makes sense. Now, these protections are really awesome for celebrities and for people that have recognizable likeness and voices. Obviously, some of the rub is also with background actors, you know, being replaced or being scanned in once and being used in the backgrounds of projects. The problem is using AI, you can just generate a billion people that never existed without having to actually scan in background actors. So I'm not too sure how that will address those concerns with the SAG after strike, but it is interesting to see that we are having legislation that is protecting the likeness of someone inside of projects specifically geared towards Hollywood. NVIDIA also came out with some news that basically says that image generation on an NVIDIA GPU is now seven times faster whenever you are using a Windows PC. Now, this only applies to images that are being created with stable diffusion, so it's not gonna increase the speed if you're using a third-party application like Firefly, Midjourney, or Dolly, but it is cool to see that NVIDIA is increasing the speed on localized GPUs. And I should also note that they had an announcement about this RTX VSR real-time up tool. So essentially, this is an algorithm that can up streamed content into a much higher quality. So the quality that's coming from the stream may be lower, but this AI algorithm essentially is going to increase the overall quality. And we'll actually release a new podcast episode very soon with the team at Leia, where we actually talked about this being a very real future where your actual computers or your devices are using algorithms to increase the quality of the actual input reference video or film into a better quality and how that may help us as we move forward to get maximum quality from the technology. I also came across this interesting experiment using Hotshot Stable Diffusion XL 
with a video to video model. Essentially, they converted their video into this really stable anime format. And it seems like they're using some sort of technology with Animate Diff to pull this off. They even came out with a breakdown of how they put this together. So I definitely recommend checking that out if you can. There's also this incredible video of a person with a cat for a head that is just fantastic. And if you actually look, the video that it was sampled from for this video is the same as the video that was sampled for this anime project. So it seems like you can generate some results that are very dramatically different, but are also incredibly stable using this technology. We'll keep you updated as it progresses. And now it's time for our AI films of the week. So this week's first film is The Lost Transmissions that was created by Afraid to Sleep. Essentially, the film is an astronaut sending their last message back to Earth and, you know, chaos ensues. I think this project is really good, not only with the sound design and the shot curation, but also has some really interesting VFX shots that kind of showcase the future of visual effects work and the stimulations look pretty darn good. And it's also very emotive. So fantastic job on that project. We also came across this project called Comanche that essentially tells the story of the Comanche's relationship with horses. And it has some really good consistent shot selection and it tells the story of a people group that essentially is underrepresented in Hollywood. And I think that's just another instance of using AI to highlight stories that may not be told through traditional film pipelines. Our student project of the week comes from Lei Ata, who put together this really interesting concept of an animated film where a kid finds his grandpa's computer and it has the power to bring incredible things to life. And it really showcases the use of in painting to help tell a story. And there's a monster dinosaur at the end, which looks really fun. So I've got to say fantastic work on your assignment. And our final bit of news comes from the Today Show that interviewed a woman whose son had visited 17 doctors over three years and they could not find what was causing the boy chronic pain. And the woman was essentially able to type in her son's symptoms into ChatGPT and the algorithm was able to properly diagnose what was going on with her son. So. It's an incredibly interesting use of the technology. And at the very end of the article, she says that there's nobody that connects the dots for you. But it's really interesting because if you're thinking about artificial intelligence, one of the things that it does incredibly well is connecting dots that humans have trouble connecting. So it was able to help someone in need using the power of this new technology. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of AI Film News. You can, of course, subscribe to our newsletter to get AI film news directly to your inbox. And you could subscribe here in YouTube to get the latest tutorials, news, and film concepts. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.